In this video, we're taking a look at a rare piece of recording history used on artists like the Beach Boys and Frank Sinatra that Mixwave has brought to us here in the modern day, the Electrodyne 511 Equalizer. Electrodyne is a vintage name going all the way back to the 60s where their consoles were used in large studios like Warner and Capitol. Today, Ken Hirsch of Orphan Audio stewards the Electrodyne name. The 511 hardware is based on the original design notes from the Electrodyne archives, and it's approved by its original designers, which enter our today's sponsor, Mixwave, who has brought this faithfully recreated piece of recording history into the digital age for us to be able to use. And boy, does it sound good. I've been using Mixwave products ever since they launched their very first drum sampler, so I'm really excited to be able to use this tool and show you guys what it can do because they're one of my favorite plug-in manufacturers in the space right now. But yeah, the Electrodyne 511 is a very simple yet very effective inductor-styled EQ. It's got a high knob, and a low knob. Can't really go wrong with that. Now that being said, while it is an EQ, I would personally think of it more as a tone shaper because it's got a lot of mojo. It can really transform a source if you push it hard enough. The Electrodyne 511 kind of fills the space between a Neve and an API flavor-wise. And in Taylor Larson's words, it has the grit and the color of a Neve, yet with the glossiness of an API. And honestly, I'd happen to agree with that assessment. Today, we're gonna take a look at the Electrodyne 511 on kick, snare, guitars, and mix bus and show you the different sounds that you can get out of this guy. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right guys, so we are here in the session. This song is called Lie To Me by the artist Clyde. It is unreleased, but I will go ahead and link the artist on Spotify here in the description so you can go check them out if you want to. This song is already mixed and on the kick and the snare, the guitars and the mix bus and all that, I have disabled my EQs that I normally will use on this so we can just hear what the Electrodyne 511 is doing to the masters. So first of all, here on the kick, we have the Electrodyne. This is the plugin. And a quick overview of this guy is, you know, well, like I said, you have two knobs. You have your high-end frequency, your low-end frequency here. You have your frequency selectors down here at 1.5K, 3K, 5K, and 10K. And at 1.5, 3, and 5K, you get a bell option. And I'll post a picture of the bell curves from the manual of the hardware unit on the screen so you can see kind of how wide these are. And 10K, you only get a shelf, but all of these, if you toggle the shelf button here, will all become a shelf wherever. So you can have it at 1.5K and you know make it a shelf if you want. Uh, here on the low frequency knob, we have 40, 100, 250, and 500 hertz. Same thing with 250 and 500, you get these as bell curves, and I'll put those up on the screen as well. And the 40 and the 100 are low shelf only, but you can also shelf the 250 and the 500 if you so please. Over here at the top, we have our input and our output gain. We have input and output filters, which is a high pass and a low pass filter that you can toggle on or off as you would wish. We have oversampling from one, two, four, and eight X, and we also have a mix knob. It's a pretty straightforward plugin, and without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get right into what this sounds like on the kick, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the ways that I would personally use this. So right now I have the kick soloed, and it's just gonna be the kick, nothing else. So let's say I wanna add some top end right here at the 10K. It's a lot of air out. In. You could you could run with that and you could be good. It's cool to reach for this instead of another clinical EQ. But let's go ahead and mess with this a little bit further and see how uh, much we can get out of this dude. So cut that. In, out, in. Like more conservatively, that's probably how I would use that to where, you know, I'm just shaving a little bit of the 250 out here around 3.17 dB and about 4 dB here. Uh, the high shelf feels really musical. Yeah, I mean, even just the 10K felt really musical on its own, but I mentioned this being more of like a tone shaping tool. Show you that this thing pretty much just doesn't break and it can, you know, achieve what you kind of want it to in terms of uh, shaping. Crank that all the way. Go to lows. Out. 
in. Out. In. This just gets freaking huge. It's basically like a big knob. Obviously this isn't uh, compensated for makeup gain because it's an EQ. I don't know about you, but I don't auto compensate for makeup gain on my EQs. I don't think you should either. That's, you know, you're, the whole idea of an EQ is you're boosting gain. If that doesn't float your boat, then go ahead and, you know, compensate for your gain. But in a realistic real world scenario where you're trying to get something to sound a certain way, this is pretty much what I would be doing. You get like a cool, nice little lift in the previous example and in this one, if you just want to like, you know, go straight to the wall with it and, you know, pretty much hammer it pretty hard, you got that too. Now that we've heard the kick, I'm going to go ahead and go to the snare. And same thing here, you know, on the snare, we have the EQ on my snare group that I had bypassed. So it's just going to be the Electrodyne 511 doing, doing its thing here. I think you'll really be able to tell what this does on the high end in a really nice and special way. So we're going to go ahead and have the kick and the snare both in together on this part. Start with the high. Really brings out that snare bottom mic if you crank it at 10k. Dial it back. And then here at 250, boosting 250. Fat. That's just huge. Let's go ahead, bypass, out. Out, in, like it just really makes the low end of that snare just become super, super fat, super, super bloomy, and the top end, it gives you a really nice sizzle. It's not too sizzly, it's like right here I have this at, you know, 3.29 there and, you know, pretty heavy on the 250 hertz at pretty much 5.5 dBs, which is, that's not subtle at all. It's a really cool sound. And, you know, if we we're going to go ahead and do more of the tone shaping aspect here on the snare, we can go ahead and do that as well. And then go to the high gain and go to 1.5k, engage the shelf. Here, I would probably put the output down a little bit, just because it's getting a little bit too loud. Bypass. In, out, in. It really is just pretty much, like I said, a bigger button. It really gives it like a nice lift just overall. It's doing like that grit thing from the Neve, just like, you know, Taylor said, and it stays glassy in the top end. It gives enough color and it also, while giving that color, allows the source to remain true to itself at the same time. Next here we have it on guitars. And this thing is pretty awesome, particularly on guitars, because whether you're boosting it or cutting it, it's really, really musical in, you know, a frequency range that's really aggressive and nasty. This, it just, it dips it out in such a musical way to where, you know, you're like, oh, wow, I just want, you know, harshness to die. Don't think of like, I want this frequency or this frequency to die. You're like, I don't want harshness. You dip it out and boom, that's what you get. So... With these guitars, there's no EQ on these guitars at all. This is just what it is. I bypassed all the EQs, so we're going to listen to that soloed. So I'd say this 5K is a little bit too aggressive. Let's dip it out. That's really nice. Out. In. Like that darkens it in such a musical way without completely, you know, decimating the soul of the guitar tone. And alternatively, let's say you just wanted it to be super bright and super aggressive. It works that way too really well. Let's dial it back. Go 10K. Just adds that scratch. Sick. Out. In. Let's push it some more. 
Let's go 250. Just the way it voices it is so nice. Now, one of my favorite places to use this is the mix bus. And you can really tell, you know, that a little bit goes a long way with this in terms of, you know, the color and the grit that's there. But it does it in a way that, like I've said before, keeps the initial sound true to itself. It's not completely hijacking your mix. For mixing and mix bus duties, I think that this is a really nice thing to, as I've said before, like just lift, give it a nice little lift and elevate it. So we're going to listen to that right now. I mean, you really don't need to say anything more. <laughs> like, it really speaks for itself. That's really sick. So now, you know, last thing I want to do is um, disengage all of the Electrodon 511s that we have here and just see what it does in an overall macro sense. Right now it's in. We have that on kick, snare, guitars, and mix bus. And I don't know about you, but I think it's pretty clear to be able to hear, you know, what this EQ is doing. You know, you might be able to argue, yeah, I could do this with any other EQ. And it's like, maybe you can, but there's a very unique thing, in my opinion, about this EQ to where it's gritty and dirty, but it's also clean at the same time. And I think that's something that's missing in a lot of people's toolkits because most people have a really, really clean EQ or a really, really dirty EQ. And the ones that are kind of in the middle are still, you know, usually more clean or they're still usually more dirty. This one feels like you get the best of both worlds, you know, porque en las dos. And while this EQ may be simple in just the fact of having a high frequency and a low frequency, it really makes you use those two things to dial in the sound that you want really methodically. You put it on, you're like, I want something to be brighter. I put this on, I want this, I want this to be darker. Or maybe I just want to give the whole thing, you know, some juice. As I use this EQ, I find myself, you know, getting actually excited, just turning the knobs up and hearing the instantaneous change that I'm making. Like, that's cool. And it's very simple. Two knobs, you turn it, do you like it? No, okay, maybe turn it down. Do you turn the other knob? You like it? Okay, cool. Move on to the next thing. You know, it's just a very simple thing and I think that's really important today in mixing to where it's like you have something that's just simple as can be and you use it and then you move on to the next thing to keep your creative process going. But yeah guys, this was the Electrodyne 511 equalizer and you know, I'm a big fan of this. I'm gonna treat it kind of like MSG and put it on everything, especially guitars, cause that growl that this thing adds in the mid range on guitars is crazy. So I will have the link to the Electrodyne 511 here in the description of this video. Go ahead and check it out. Let me know in the comments what you think. And as always, please like, subscribe, Always grateful for those who decide to do that. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.